In this video, I'm going to try and answer some of your questions that you've asked during the week. Um, this one came up a lot, question 9 from Exercise 10D, especially part C, um, but I'm going to go through the whole question, and then I'll talk about part C on that exam question that I, I set you on the Google Classroom. So, first of all, this one, car of mass 900 kilograms, pull a, a trailer of 300 kilograms along a straight horizontal road. So, here's the road, car 900 and the trailer of 300. Uh, tow bar parallel to the road. The horizontal resistance is to motion of the car and the trailer have magnitudes 200 newtons and 100 newtons respectively. The engine of the car produces a constant horizontal driving force on the car of magnitude 1200 newtons. Part A, show that the acceleration of the car and the trailer is 0.75 meters per second squared. So for this, I am going to look at, because it says car and trailer, I'm going to talk about the whole system. And I'm going to resolve horizontally. There are, of course, vertical forces in here. There's the mass due to gravity, uh, the, I mean, the acceleration due to gravity. Um, and the reaction forces, but they're not relevant to the acceleration horizontally of this system. So just looking at horizontally, I've got, I'm going to put together an F equals MA equation. So forces forward, the only thing acting forward is 1,200 newtons. Take away the things that are acting against the motion. And that leaves me with mass, which is mass of the whole system is those two together, times by acceleration, which is what we're trying to find. So 1,200 minus 200 minus 100 leaves us with 900 equals 1,200A. Divide both sides by 1,200, and we get 900 over 1,200 equals A, which obviously equals 3 quarters which is 0.75 meters per second squared. So that's the first bit done. Second bit, uh, find the magnitude of the tension in the tow bar. So for this bit, I'm going to show actually two versions of this. I can either isolate the trailer, which is going to be easier, um, but what I'll add to the diagram here is the tension in the tow bar. So the tension in the tow bar is what's dragging the trailer forwards, and it's also what's acting backwards on the car, dragging the car, um, well, stopping the car going forward so fast. We know that the acceleration of the whole system now is 0.75 meters per second squared. So for part B, considering the trailer on its own and resolving horizontally, I've got Going forwards, again, F equals MA. Trailer, the tension going forwards, minus the 100 newtons, is the mass of the trailer, times by the acceleration of the trailer, uh, which means that T equals 300 times by 0 0.75, um, plus 100, so that is... Uh, 325 newtons. So that's the answer to that one. And it's rearranged. What I also could have done there, and I, you might do this in an exam just to check, is to isolate the car instead. So if I do the same thing with the car, this isn't necessary, I should get the same answer, but it's a good way of checking. If you think about the car, the things acting forwards are the 1200, and the things acting backwards are the tension and the 200 newtons of resistance to motion, and that should equal the mass times by the acceleration again. Uh, that gives me uh, a thousand minus t, taking away the 200, so a thousand minus t equals that 675. Switch those places, a thousand minus 675 equals t, which equals 325 newtons. So check it's the same thing. It should be. It's the same system that's being talked about. Part C is complicated, and it involves an entirely new setup, really, apart from we've got the same trailer and car involved. But it says, given that the resistances to motion are unchanged, as in we've still got 200, still got 100, 
and the magnitude of the thrust in the tow bar is 100 newtons, find the value of F. And this is after, so I forgot to read this bit out, the car is moving along the road when the driver sees a set of traffic lights have turned red. He reduces the force produced by the engine to zero, so there's no forward force acting anymore, and applies the brakes, so there's now some backwards force acting on it. The brakes produce a force on the car of magnitude F newtons, and the car and trailer decelerate. So the acceleration is now going to be going that way, deceleration, but the car and trailer are still moving forwards. So I'm going to give a, a new diagram for this situation. We've got still 900. Put units in. And still 300 here. This is now got no forwards driving force on it at all. It has a force of F. Those are the brakes acting on it. And that's the force I've got to find. In the tow bar, this is now, because it's decelerating, this is now uh, experiencing thrust that way. And this is experiencing thrust this way. So we know that thrust is 100 newtons. And they still have the same... resistances to motion as they had before. This is a complicated question because initially it seems like we've got two unknowns. We have to know what the acceleration is. I'm still going to call it forwards, but I'm expecting to get a negative number for that. You could mark it backwards and say, okay, I expect a positive number, but I'm going to keep the acceleration the same way as the motion. It's still traveling forwards, um, but I know that that should be a negative acceleration now. Um, it seems like we're missing that acceleration and the force here. But actually, if I look at this trailer, I've got everything I need on this trailer. I've got always the, all of the forces I need on that trailer. So I'm going to think about the trailer on its own. This is all part C. And resolve horizontally. Again, thinking about forwards as positive. The forces acting on the trailer for my F equals MA equation are no forwards forces at all. We've got 100 newtons acting backwards and another 100 newtons acting backwards from that thrust in the tow bar. And that equals the mass times by the acceleration. Therefore, minus 200 equals 300A. Divide both sides by 300 and cancel. And that gives us A equals minus 2 thirds. And having got that on its own, we know that this acceleration is true for the whole system. So this whole system is decelerating at two-thirds of a meter per second squared. So I'm now going to consider the car on its own. And again, resolving horizontally and treating forwards as positive, as I have here. The forces that are acting on the car are 100 newtons forward from the thrust in the tow bar, minus the 200 from its resistance to motion, minus the force from the brakes, and that equals mass times acceleration, which we now know to be minus two-thirds. Bit of a mess there. Let's sort that out. Times by minus two-thirds. So altogether, that uh, we can rearrange that. Minus F minus 100, putting the 100 and 200 together. Uh, equals 900A, or that is minus 600, two-thirds, minus two-thirds of 900. That gives us minus F equals minus 500 newtons, when I add 100 to both sides. Therefore, F equals 500 newtons. And that's the answer to that question. That's the braking force applied to the car at that point. Um, I suppose the biggest thing here is to remember that thrust looks like out arrows because those arrows always represent the way that this object is feeling the force. So it's feeling the force acting backwards on it because the car is stopping it from moving. Um, and because this is moving forwards and applying pressure on that bar, the car feels that pressure acting forwards on it. So that's why the, the arrows have changed direction from uh, tension to thrust here. 
Okay, so what was different then in the question that came from the test? I'm not going to go through this whole question. I'm just going to go through the part C of this. Uh, again, we had a similar setup, a, uh, a car and a trailer. Uh, they had resistances to motion. Uh, and those resistances to motion are going to stay the same. And then the car breaks, and given that the magnitude of the force in the tow bar must not exceed 1,650 newtons, calculate the greatest possible deceleration of the car. Now, this is a bit of a different situation because we're talking about, again, the force in the tow bar, which is 1,650. That's going to be experienced as thrust. It's, it's under compression, this tow bar, in order to slow the car down. Again, there's some unknown force on the brakes here given by the brakes, which is slowing it down. Um, but actually, to see the greatest possible deceleration of the car, we should look at the simpler thing. So if I looked at the car, I've got a missing acceleration. And I've got a missing F. Whereas if I look at just the trailer, I know the maximum allowed here in this bar. Um, and that means that the only unknown for the trailer is A. So I isolate the trailer and resolving horizontally and I'm going to again treat forwards as positive. Forces acting on that trailer are maximum 1650 and I have to add or subtract that resistance to motion which is still there because until the car is the trailer is stationary until the car and the trailer are stationary, those resistances to motion from friction from the road, they're still going to be there. So we include those. So that is mass times by acceleration. Uh, that gives us um, minus one seven minus one eight thousand eight hundred equals six hundred A which means that A equals minus 3. And we were asking the question for the greatest possible deceleration of the car. I've got acceleration is minus 3, so we're talking about maximum deceleration is 3 meters per second squared. And you might think, why is there a maximum deceleration? I suppose what's implied here is that the tow bar can't take any greater pressure than, than this. Well, well, not pressure, but thrust force of 1,650 newtons. Uh, if the car slows down too fast, then the trailer might snap this, this bar or break it in some way. So this the idea is that the car cannot exceed this deceleration of 3 meters per second square. Otherwise, something will go wrong with the trailer and the bar. So that's what's implied by the fact that there is a greatest possible deceleration here. I hope that helps answer some questions. Um, send any more questions to me and I will try and answer those ready for uh, next lesson.